Welcome to Extreme Reloading. This is episode two for season number 10, and this season we're tackling the 300 PRC for my Barrett MRAD bolt action rifle. Now, what I need to do today is I need to make sure that my brand new factory new virgin brass is actually ready for reloading. That's a, actually a pretty good question. Is factory new brass absolutely ready for reloading or for loading? To determine that, we can make a couple of tests of this brass itself. Now, I'll be reloading or using Peterson brass this year, this season, and I'll also be using some Lapua brass this season, both premium brass, both very good brass, um, and I'm going to be using both of those, but I'm going to be working up a load individually with Lapua and with the Peterson brass, just to make sure that with those different components that everything is absolutely safe and reliable with, uh, with my reloading process and the, the loads that I do work up. We'll see how that uh, pans out. We might find out that the optimal charge weight, the powder charge, is the same for Lapua brass as it is for Peterson. Or we might find out that they're different. I don't know how that's going to play out. We'll find out in just a few weeks. But let's get back to this. Okay, so I've got this Lapua brass and I'm interested to know if it is indeed ready for loading. You know, it looks fantastic. Got a nice annealing on that. Uh, things look just fantastic um, on this thing. But how do I know if my brass is ready for loading? Well, one of the things that I can do is I can drop those pieces of brass in a case gauge. This is an Ellie Wilson case gauge, obviously for the 300 PRC. Brand new, and one of the things that you're going to want to do with something like this or with your reloading dies is you're going to want to clean those. What I do with that is I hit them inside and out with Hornady one-shot gun cleaner and lube and then I use a little bit of Hoppies number no. 9 on a wet patch and a little bit of elbow grease. Make sure that this thing is nice and clean and then of course make sure it's dry and ready for use. So all I need to do on this to take this, drop it into that case gauge and we're going to determine if it fits. Now on a case gauge like this, if that case itself protrudes above the level of the case itself, that means it is not sized properly. It's not ready to go. If it drops below the lowest part of this recess here, that also means it is not ready to be loaded. There's something wrong with that case. This particular case looks great. Uh, perfect, actually. I'm not going to run through all of them right now on camera. I will run through every single one of these before I actually load them. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of this Peterson brass now. Again, very nice looking brass. The annealing looks great on this. It might be annealed just a little bit further, this particular piece, just a little bit further down the body of the case. The case head primer pocket looks just great. Also, the, um, the mouth looks a little bit different in contrast to the Lapua because the Lapua has a little bit of a chamfer on it already whereas the Peterson brass is just flush. I'll say that this Peterson for sure, for certain, will need to have a, a chamfer applied to the mouth. But let's go ahead and drop it into the same case gauge. And yeah, just like the Lapua, it 
is good, looks excellent there as well, and of course doesn't stick. We don't want that. We don't want to force it in there. If you feel that you've got to force it, it isn't ready for loading either. But this is great stuff. Very good. And that was what I was expecting uh, with brass like this. Brand new brass. That's kind of what we expect. Um, and I'm going to run through all 100 of these. I'll run through all 100 of the Lapua cases as well. And the next thing that I want to test to make sure that my cases are ready for loading is I want to do a quick test of the primer pocket depths. So I've got my digital micrometer here, digital caliper. I'm going to start it up, close it up, zero it, make sure it's zeroed. And then I'm going to use this, this right here, to measure the depth of that primer pocket. We're getting 0, 0,130, 0, 0,130 for this one. Let's take another piece here. You got to be careful when you do the measurement also, because if you measure wrong, you're not going to, you know, get reliable results at all. This is 0, 0,128.5, probably 0, 0,129. That is within a thousand. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's do another sample right here. Try it out here. 0, 0,129. Pretty darn consistent stuff. Now let's go ahead and, I, and I'm going to check all these as well. I'm not going to do it all on camera though. Let's check a few of these Peterson cases now. Same approach right here. 0, 0,130. Very consistent even between brands of brass. And this is what I'd expect, but don't assume in reloading. 0, 0,129. Again, very similar to what we're seeing with the Lapua brass, just slight one thousandth of an inch variability. Some of that variability, because I'm just doing this on camera, could be as part of my technique. Let's do this once more. 131, 0, 0,131. So everything's within a thousandth uh, of an inch. Um, I'm not worried about that. But I am going to take a little bit more time, run through all of these with this, run through all of these with the case gauge. And then what I'm also going to do, and I've already decided upon this, I'm going to touch up the mouths of these cases with the VLD chamfer, very low drag chamfer. That is designed specifically for these long four caliber bullets. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I've done, uh, I do that on every one of these cases that we're going to be using. So give me a little while to run these all through the case gauge, check those primer pockets, and then we're going to head over to the case prep station and run these all through the um, chamfer and deburr tools. Now, as you can see, these Lapua cases, it's a Lapua case, it has a slight chamfer and deburr on it already. It's pretty nicely prepared in that way. We're going to go ahead and affect a VLD chamfer on it simply because that is the type of bullet that I will be using with these cases. Just a touch up of these things. Normally what I do is I'll start off a little bit here, just a little bit, give it a little bit there. Then we'll take off any deburring as necessary right there. There we go. Simply changed that case mouth just a little bit. Just a bit. That looks good. We'll do that with all these Lapua cases, but I'm also going to work on the Peterson cases. Now these have kind of a real flush cut to them right now. And I'm really going to have to put a little bit more elbow grease into these to get that VLD chamfer on them. Let's go ahead and do this. Of course, it won't take very long to do it any anyway. Again, I'll start there. 
little bit more right there. And finish it up. Now that looks nice. That one is ready. We're going to go ahead and do that with all of these cases and they will be set. You know when I was preparing these case mounts I noticed that several of the cases were not perfectly round. They weren't dented but they certainly were not perfectly round. So the easy fix to this is to use what I did is I used this expander die body from 21st century. This is a aluminum body here with a window, a viewing window, so you don't bottom out your otherwise very nicely prepared cases and have to do some, some things over. Uh, and they use a mandrel. So 21st Century also makes these mandrels. This happens to be the 03060 uh, mandrel that I also use the same size. have very good luck with this for my 308 Winchester. Kind of makes sense, right? They're both 308 caliber uh, rounds, 300 PRC and 308 Winchester. Plus I did a little bit something different, a little bit more extreme this time than I normally do, and that is I dipped and ran those necks in into this Imperial application media. This uses a graphite, kind of neat stuff. Um, the dry neck media or the neck media is already more or less impregnated with this graphite. So it makes things very easy and not so messy. Now a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, I did an experiment using mica powder on the necks and I didn't see any advantage at all. Didn't see any gains uh, by using that. At the same token, I also did not see any major problems or detractions from precision by using that mica powder. Uh, but then again, if it's not useful, doesn't help me out, why bother? Well, more recently I've been reading about the application of graphite and so I decided to buy some of this stuff and give it a try. This is my first try with it with these particular cases that I just prepared a matter of minutes ago. So we'll see how that goes throughout this season of extreme reloading. So what I've been reading is other shooters are reporting improved results. Now what do they mean by improved results? What are we looking for? Well, they're, they're saying that they're seeing a little bit tighter precision, a little bit of improved precision on their, uh, on their hand loads. And the idea behind mica or graphite or molybdenum, molly, uh, those sorts of things is that uh, you improve the consistency of the bullet's release from the case as it's being fired and also you improve the, the smoothness by which that bullet is uh, seated into the case. And uh, that are, is the reasons why folks are suggesting they're seeing a little bit of an improved or improvement in precision. As I said earlier, we will see as we go through this season of extreme reloading. Once all of this was completed, did another real quick check on all those cases, they are ready for loading and they're ready for the load workup. And that is the topic of the next episode of Extreme Reloading. Thanks a bunch for watching. See you next time.